Hey everybody, Chuck and Stacy here with VO Buzz Weekly, and we're back with part two with Tina Morosco. Yes. And you know what? what? Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, you guys. That's the word of the day. Subscribe. subscribe. Let's get buzzed. <laughs> Turn it up. Get ready. You're tuned in to Feel Buzz Weekly. Weekly. And now, prepare to get seriously buzzed with your hosts, Chuck Duran and Stacy J. Aswan. Okay, so. Okay. How did you get to LA? All right. What so happened? Three years passed. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Yep. Um, I go to Rutgers. I get really amazing training and really great performance experience. And when I'm there, I get tapped to teach voice and speech to the undergrad. So yeah. now I have like a whole new skill set that I, I've acquired. Mm -hmm. And um, I graduate. And at the time, um, I was married and my husband lived. He actually moved to San Francisco to start a hedge fund, and so L.A. just seemed like a better option. Right. So I actually spearheaded the campaign for Rutgers to start doing an L.A. showcase out here. Mm. And so um, came out here with our class, and we did the showcase, and I got an agent and a manager right away. And um, God bless Jeff Danis, who was my very, very first voiceover agent, who I knew as an agency would think he would be predisposed to go like, oh, God. You know, like now she's yeah. wanting to be an actress or whatever. Right. But I had produced my own voiceover demo. And he was like, you know what? It's pretty good. I'm going to give you a chance. And back in those days, this was probably 99 when I moved out here. Yep. The voiceover business was so hopping. Oh I mean, gosh. it was like the internet stocks. I mean, the internet, mm -hmm. um, all the dot coms yep. were going yep. crazy. Mm -hmm. And so you would audition for like 20 different commercials a day. You would go to the agent's office. And book three of them. And you would book three of yeah. them. Yeah, joke. And we didn't even have totally. cell phones at the time. You had pagers yeah. and you would get this page like yeah. two, 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 two. And that meant like yeah. Dean's calling Good you because you have a job, right? Yeah. Exactly. And yeah. so you'd have yeah. to pull over and like, yeah. you know. Um, and so he gave me my first break in the voiceover world. And, and, D and it was ICM at the time and then DPN became my family. It was mm -hmm. like, he is such an amazing force in this business yeah. and has been for so long I and know, he became man. another like he would be my next mentor mm -hmm. in the process mm -hmm. yeah. i learned so much from him and he is so generous in yeah. his spirit Jeff is really, and, yeah. Really cool. yeah yeah um so switching gears a little bit you still audition i do yes so how do you approach auditions do you and and can you offer any whether it's a performance tip or self-directing, because a lot of people don't have the benefit of an agency, or they'll mix, right, right, you right. Know, going in and, and being and recording at home. Um, the first tip I have is if you're recording in your closet, put pajamas on and, get, and like truly get as comfortable as you can, because again, I think the way you feel when you read comes through in your voice. Mm -hmm. So you don't you want to be as comfortable and relaxed. You want to know you have enough time that you're not right. rushed. You're not just like throwing it out there. Um, and in terms of self direction, I think it's such a great luxury because you can do as many takes as you want. But I do think you should trust your instincts and not mm -hmm. like you know go crazy. Um, so how I approach an audition is, like I said earlier, I read everything. Even after all of these years, after 20 some odd years of doing this, I don't take a word for granted. I read every single word on that page to find out all the different clues. And I try to put myself in the head of the writer or the producer and like what exactly they're trying to convey, what Which the is vibe so is. Yes. Yeah. And I have so many friends who are creative directors at ad agencies mm -hmm. and writers. And so that helps because a lot of times like, you know, we'll talk about like the genesis of a spot and like where they were coming from and then how it evolved. And then mm -hmm. you think like, how can I serve that as the voiceover right, on right. it? Yeah. So I kind of keep those conversations in mind and, and really figure out, okay, who am I in this? Not who am I like, you know, some crazy character, but which version of Tina am I? Mm -hmm. And um, I just try to be as authentic as I can and convey the message, you know, the message yeah. in the most yeah. real way. Mm -hmm. um, but two things are really important in that. What I have learned recently in like my spiritual practices is, a, is the power of intention, okay? Mm -hmm. So if you're going into the booth and you're like, oh, I got five things I have to get done and then I have to get out of here, you're probably not gonna get those jobs because your intention wasn't focused, right? Um, and then also the power of love. This is gonna sound a little like hokey and weird, 
But love is a frequency and it comes, you know, our voices are vibrational instruments, right? Mm -hmm. And you know this from being a musician. And so I think the reason this show works, we talked about like off camera, is because of the love that you bring, not only like for each other, but for what you're doing and for the industry and all of that. That love goes out into the world and people feel it and they respond mm -hmm. to it. Mm -hmm. So I try to put that into every single solitary audition that I do. Like I try to like find the love, like where's the love for this? Like whether mm -hmm. it's like I love the product or I love like the message that I'm mm -hmm. like sharing with you or even if it is pot roast for $4.99 right, at right. like Ralph's, like just imagining like who might benefit from that, like when they receive that message, as mm -hmm. silly as that sounds. And then you know, I like kind of get into my heart space before I read, yep. and then I let that go. And I think- That's um, cool, man. Yeah, and yeah. then honestly, and I swear to you, as I like type it up, like, here you go, thanks, Tina. Like I always write like XO or love or whatever. And then when I hit the send button, I literally like send it from my heart out into the world. Mm -hmm. And That's I just- That's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it may sound hokey, but like- It's no, not hokey, and it makes, everybody should do that no. from here on end. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, because that's what it's all about. It's yes. about like it's about spreading goodness and joy and Absolutely. love into the world. I and, totally and that comes from loving what you do, mm -hmm. right? But even sometimes you're not in the mood or whatever. You kind of right. like go, oh, well, this is my discipline now. Yeah. Like this mm -hmm. is what this yeah. is what's important yeah. for me to communicate. So that's really yeah. cool, T. Thanks. Mm. Well, but kind of going, staying in the the heart space and the love space. Back in 2013, you went for another master's in I spiritual did. psychology. As if one wasn't um, Exactly. No, but I remember and just thinking like that was so, I mean, that was so wonderful and it made such sense mm -hmm. for you to do that. So what inspired you to do that and how has it really changed you? I'm trying to remember because it's now such a part of my life. Like what inspired it, I think was, you know, sometimes along the way when you've been doing something for a long time, you kind of lose your purpose. You kind of go like, well, I'm doing this and I'm almost on autopilot now and I'm mm -hmm. on rote. And it's, again, it was another one of those moments where I'm like, something's a little off. I'm not like mm -hmm. totally fulfilled, even though mm -hmm. my life is amazing. Um, and so I had stumbled into a few people who had done it and just raved about it. And I had no idea what it even was. So I was like, you know, let me just go find out about this. And I went and it just was like, all the lights went on. Mm -hmm. and. It's a really, really simple, really beautiful principle, which is um, that we're not humans having a spiritual experience. We're all souls having a human experience. Mm -hmm. um, and that each one of our souls has chosen this exact life path to learn the lessons that we need to learn to evolve in consciousness and to evolve. And really, you could substitute the word consciousness for love, right? And so... There are no mistakes, there are no wrong choices, they're just different opportunities for learning. And when you approach your life that way, yeah. it just takes so much of the pressure off of oh like, my gosh, oh yeah. my God, should I, should I take this job? Should I not take this mm -hmm. job? It's like, take it or don't take it, you're gonna learn a lesson either way. Mm -hmm. Right, um, right. And One lesson might be better than the other. That's true. Well, no, but I, because I always <laughs> say like every every situation, there's a, you can view it as opportunity or punishment. Right, yeah. And Absolutely. so just how you frame it makes such a yeah. difference and in it, how you. And it's all about that, it's about Mm -hmm. It's about reframing situations. It's about like learn, like seeing what your patterns are that kind of get you into these spots where you are not comfortable and mm -hmm. you want to get out mm -hmm. of and going through and learning how to heal yourself and transmute those programs that have been running for right. a really long time. Right. And it's a lot about, it's, it's about love. It's about forgiveness. And it's mm -hmm. about like seeing the world through soul-centered eyes, which is mm -hmm. a really beautiful way to live. Now, Absolutely. I don't Absolutely. live like that on the 405, like trying yeah. to get no, here. But you know like, what? <laughs> Living like that when you are... <laughs> You'll have it more on the way back. Yeah, on yeah, the way back, exactly. I definitely, I totally will. When you will. are presented with like an important decision to make, if you're living like that, it yes. probably is really easy to make better decisions. Yeah. You know, because mm -hmm. you're... You're you're thinking about them much deeper than just like and you're making on a, better a hasty frequency decision. For I'm it. just going to do that. Yeah, yeah. And the main difference in the way I live now, I would say, is I don't live from a place of fear anymore. You know, so often we make these fear-based decisions, like, well, if I don't do this, I'm not going to have enough money to pay the rent, or mm -hmm. if I don't do this, you know. Mm -hmm. And so you end up 
your life takes these steps away from what your initial purpose was and you take your eye off of that. And when you don't operate from fear, when you're operating from love, because that's all there really is, everything is either love or fear, right? Mm -hmm. So if a decision comes in and you're, and you're struggling with it, you're like, when I think about doing this, do I feel more love and expansion or do I feel more fear and like contraction? And, mm -hmm. and it just makes things really easy. And you just start going with the line of energy that's coming toward you. And looking back at my life, I think I've always lived like that unconsciously. Like mm -hmm. if you look at the story that I just told, right? right? It's like something would come my way and I would say yes and do it, even though I didn't know anything about it, right? And then something else would come my way and I'd say yes and do it. And then all of a sudden something doesn't feel right. So then you kind of look and say, where's the next stream of energy coming from? Mm -hmm. And then kind of like follow that. And that yeah. will never steer you wrong. Mm. And it, and True. some people just call that intuition, which it yep. is, you know, yep. it's just, right. I'm just trying to become more conscious of it. That's these so days. great. And, yeah. is, and so is yeah. this something that you, that you teach that you, it's funny that you say that because in addition to voiceover coaching, I have started coaching people uh -huh. and, um, you know, we have like practices and tools that we can give people to, you know, just like help them like. It could be something as simple as like creating an ideal scene. Like, so say, you know, somebody comes to me and they want to have a great voiceover career. Like the first thing that I would tell them if they're open to it, I mean, I could just coach them just straight up voiceover. Right. But if it comes up in conversation that they're interested in this, I would teach them how to do like an ideal scene, which is you, it's, you know, kind of like a vision board, but it's just written mm -hmm. and you put all of the things that you want to see in your career on this piece of paper inside a heart, I am, and every spoke from the heart is like, I am joyfully walking into Chuck's studio to record my demo. And it's all about, <laughs> it's all about, the, the magic to all of this is the feeling place. So the word joyfully or the word like, um, you know, like jovially or, mm -hmm. you know, whatever it is, yeah. right? Because the creation like the manifestation process happens in the feeling. It's like that love, it comes through, it's a frequency. Yep. All of the feelings that you have are a frequency and right. that's what goes out into the universe and that's when you start manifesting and creating things. You're not creating them from your thoughts, right. you're creating them from your feelings. Right. Yes. So if I think like, I wanna have an amazing voiceover career, what I would do if I was meditating on that is I would think about how it would feel to walk into the studio and have you play my demo for me and like listen to it on the speakers and go like, my heart is like singing. It's like mm -hmm. jumping out of my chest. Like yeah. that feeling is where the magic is and yeah. that feeling is where creation lies. And so. Yeah. That's I, good, I love that. Yeah, yeah. That get out of really, your head really and cool. get into your yeah. heart. Yeah. yeah, and you know what, in today's crazy oh, world so yeah. hustle and bustle yeah. and people yanking you every which way and mm -hmm. and I mean I find that, competition that, yeah, yeah I find mm -hmm. that today more and more people are just really almost like disoriented right mm -hmm. you know they have no idea what they're gonna do tomorrow yeah. or what's happening next week mm -hmm. or next month mm -hmm. and you could plan stuff out but really changing the way you look at things or feel about things yeah. is like a huge key. Mm -hmm. I love and it. you'll mm -hmm. be amazed. Let's just say like you're an actor and you're in a waiting room. It could be on camera, it could be voice. And you hear something going on in there mm -hmm. and you're like, oh God, I can't believe I have to go in there now. Whether yeah. it's, it could be either way. Right. It could be uproarious laughter and you're like, oh God, how am I going to follow that? Right. Mm -hmm. Or it could be like there's conflict going on and now they're pissed off and you're the next person that's going to walk in, right? And so what you can do is just sit in the waiting room and just literally just fill that room with love. Just imagine just like love filling that room and love filling every person in that mm -hmm. room. And it it's palpable. It changes. Well, because we're energy. We're yes. all energy, which is why you might meet someone and you, you feel that connection or you go like, ooh. Right. You know, because that, that frequency is, is Absolutely. Off. Yeah. Absolutely. No, I'm totally, yeah. totally yeah. of the frequency That's really thing cool. is huge. Okay, yeah. so now everybody's going to call Tina, not just yeah. to coach with her, <laughs> right, but, but to get the no, inside scoop on sharing the love. No, there. I'm glad <laughs> you're doing that because it's really, really important. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and really you know, important. I think it can be incorporated into everything. Like it can certainly be incorporated into voiceover and mm -hmm. acting work and, yeah. no, and just how you live your you life. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I'm a way better mother because of it. That's mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. And yeah. And you know, like anything you have to practice and I have to yep. be reminded of it. And I, yep. you know, 
Did anybody in particular, and maybe you don't remember who it is, but did they give you any piece of advice that you feel really like just changed everything for uh, you? Well, technically, technically, yes. And I can't remember who it was who taught me this. That's okay. It's the pencil trick. The Has pencil anybody trick. ever taught the pencil trick on the show? I don't remember. No. Okay. So. We've heard something about pencil, the thing that you write with, yes. right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I happen to have one oh. right here. Right up Exhibit my sleeve. A. Pencil trick. Um, <laughs> That was so magic-y of me. Um, if they say no, you poke them in the eye. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so in narration, there's a lot of copy. And, right. you know, sometimes we're going to get tripped up on things like relocate a refrigerator. Like that comes up from time to time. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's hard to say. So anytime you are like stuck and you can't get out of like you can't get the words out, mm -hmm. you stick a pencil in between your teeth and you say like, let's say it's like the asbestos removal crew is called. Right. And say, I can't say that. You stick a pencil in your mouth three times, the asbestos removal crew is called. The asbestos removal crew is called. The asbestos removal crew is called. You take it out, the asbestos removal crew is called. And it just comes out perfect. Yeah, it was mm -hmm. not that good that time, but yeah. in general it works. <laughs> I think you need a little bit more pencil. I, do it. I know, more no. pencil. No, no but because you know, she was like, is there lipstick on my teeth? I know. No, but check this out. I remember <laughs> when, when we were, like years ago, we were producing mm -hmm. demos together, and you had some students in there, and they would flub, and ah, you'd be like, you used that. I pulled that. out the pencil thing. Yeah, so now I remember the pencil thing, right? Yeah, it so, was. And it worked every, every time. time. It's like the apple for when you have mouth totally. noise. Right, the right. Apple. Yeah, I remember going like, wow, that was kind of weird. <laughs> but it does. <laughs> it actually works. It yeah. works every time, and it's a very, like, well-kept yes. secret. Not yes. a lot of people know, but now that is my gift to you. And the other thing is, like, when you do get the privilege these days of going in and reading with other people, mm -hmm. like I think the key is like feeding off of their energy. Because again, yeah. here we go again. It's all about energy. Mm -hmm. And like back in the day in the early 2000s when I was going to DPN every single solitary day, you're mm -hmm. working with the most talented people mm -hmm. in the industry, bar none. Yeah. More talented than any on-camera actor. Like these people are at the absolute top of the game and you have the privilege of like going in and playing with them. Yes. And so like feeding off of that and like, you know, like taking what they're doing and jumping off of that and like stealing from the best and all of that, you know, like in, yeah. in the most respectful yeah. way sure, sure. possible. But like, you know, just really being a voyeur of like great talent mm -hmm. and like seeing what you love and like seeing like trying that on for size and seeing if that works on yeah. me exactly. and, like, you know yeah, yeah. i remember awesome. i've asked my my uh best friend just harnell a bunch of times and you know for those of you who don't know him he's very very popular <laughs> <He's> amazing <laughs> and with the ladies and in voiceover no. in our never-ending world of connections you know jess's cousin was my roommate in new york oh my god that's right when i was an yes. yeah but i i've asked jesse you know in the past i said hey man because people love working with jess mm -hmm. and so i've asked him what what is it do you think about you dude that people just you know love working he goes dude it's easy and he goes and i'm conscious about it he goes when i go in for a job or an audition when and i'm around people my objective is two number one to go in there be professional and do a great job two Make sure that I don't leave that room without making sure that every single person feels that I think they're important. That's exactly mm -hmm. Engineer, it. producer, Absolutely. director, yes. other talent, whoever. Whoever. Yeah. And yeah. anyone and everyone. And I can attest that just does make you feel like that. You feel like you're the only person in the world totally. when he's talking to you. He remembers my name from like 15 he years. He remembers I the see dog's him. name. Yeah, it's yeah. crazy. But mm -hmm. I do think that that is another great tip. Somebody told me really early on in my agent day, and I will never forget it, that it is so much more important to be interested than to be interesting. Mm -hmm. And you know, my whole life I thought like I had to be this dog and pony show, like to entertain right, and yes. like make you happy yeah. and make you like me and all of this stuff. And I was like, wow, it just shifted my whole paradigm to yeah. like, I just need to genuinely invest exactly. in whoever it is that I'm sitting across from and learn about them. Yeah. And what a much more fascinating way to go through life. Absolutely. And mm -hmm. when people like genuinely feel like you care and that you're interested in them. Mm -hmm. They want you around them. They want you oh, around. Oh, I know. It's like talk less, listen more. Yeah. I'm, what do you think have I'll been her, be in some stage. of the keys to your success? Because, I mean, this is what you do. Yeah. This is what you've done for gazillions of years. A really long time. How do you, how, how? What, what I will been, say, like it, go, it dovetails right yeah. from the topic we were just on. It's all about relationships. I cannot tell you that 
my career is almost entirely built on repeat business. And so it's about showing up, being interested in who's there, connecting with them, building that relationship, going in the booth and doing the absolute best job you can. Like, I feel like conscientiousness is kind of a lost art these days. Like, it is so important. Like, of all the actors in the world, they could have chosen, they've selected you. And so you have to go in there and give them, you know, like 10 million percent, not 100 percent, you know, like give them like you know, choices beyond choices beyond choices. Do so, you prepare for that um, or do you wing it? You know what? I think I think the years of experience have prepared me for that. Mm-hmm. But I think, yeah, you, you prepare like, in other words, like if I were to book something new, I would go back and listen to my audition, hear what I did, know what like that's going to be my base, you know, my ground zero. Mm-hmm. And then, um, but I think you just prepare by really listening, listening yeah. to what they want and right. then coming up with your own ideas and choices and giving them more than they ever expected and leaving them so happy with like an embarrassment of riches that they mm-hmm. can edit and cut. You know how important that is as an editor, right? Like, Absolutely. You're like, wow, like if we use this from right. take seven and this from take two and like put those together, we would have never like created that on yeah. our own. So, um, but it's about relationships and then following up and like, and if you've had a human conversation with them about what's important to them, if it's their children or their dogs, like I can't even tell you how many people are like, you know, <laughs> crazy dog yeah. rescuers and yeah. like, you know, you, you figure out what's important to them and then you have like a basis to follow up. So it's not just this empty like, right. you know, form letter, right. form email or whatever. I look forward to working with you yes, again. Yes, cool. exactly. Totally. Fill in the blank. Blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I would say like, I have... I had a 10-year campaign for Blue Cross of New Jersey because of the the head of not the agency, but the client, the head of Blue Mm -hmm. Cross of New Jersey was a guy that lived in my dorm freshman year in college. And they were going through a dispute with like a hospital. I won't say which hospital, but, um, you know, the insurance company was having a dispute with the hospital and he wanted a voice that was authentically from New Jersey Mm -hmm. who had that really empathetic, warm sense of caring. And like, I just popped into his brain. And so he called me and he was like, BT, that's what they used to call me in college. He's like, BT, could you do me a solid? You know, could you do me a favor and do this? I was like, of course, absolutely. He's like, I don't really think What's I can BT? pay you. Oh, my actual name is Bettina. Bettina. Oh, so that's he, right. he always loved that and shortened it to BT. Yeah. Um, BT. And that turned into a 10 year radio mm. campaign for Blue Cross of New Jersey. So, um, and there's so many of those, like, where you just show up at a job and then you meet someone and, right, you right. know, like one of my best friends who is an, a creative director at an ad agency, like, I met them on a job and now they're like one of my best friends. So yep. um, repeat business is really how you have longevity in mm-hmm. this community mm-hmm. Absolutely. and world. Yeah. And, um, and connecting and so that's on about, that human yeah, level. Absolutely, yeah. about relationships. So, yeah. so, so important. Yeah. Love that. What do you think it takes to really be in the stream of the voice of a world today. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a really interesting time. So on the one hand, it's a fabulous time to get in as a new voiceover artist because the pool has expanded so greatly, right? You don't have to live in Los Angeles or New York anymore. You can live anywhere. You just have to have a quality studio in your house. Um, So that's amazing. That opportunity didn't exist 15, 20 years ago. You really had to be here and you had to like not only be here, but get into the club somehow. Mm -hmm. It was a very, very exclusive club back in the day. Um, So there's so much more opportunity. But the main thing is you have to get the training. You have to get the training and you have to do your research in terms of really knowing what's current, what trends are out there. And not just listening, like, you know, like sitting on your couch eating Doritos and like listening to commercials and like, yeah, 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 I got this, but like really listening, becoming a student of what you're interested in, Mm -hmm. going like, wow, you know, that guy, like when I first meet a student, I say like, okay, so here's your first homework assignment. I want you to go out and I want you to Free class right here, right now. Take out your pencil. Right. (laughs) 
So go out and find five commercials that sound like you could have done them. They're in your vo vocal range, they're your age range, mm -hmm. all of that. And I want you to write out the script and then I want you to describe what you hear. I want you to describe what you hear vocally, like is it a warm sound, is it velvety, is it smooth, does it sound cosmetic? You know, all the words that you would have never thought of to is describe it quick? a voice. Is it slow? Right, and right. then go into the like technical stuff, mm -hmm. like is it legato, Does it is it very smooth or is it very staccato and choppy? And you know what I mean? Is mm -hmm. it like super conversational? Is it upbeat? Is it like, you know, every word you can possibly use to describe it. And then I want you to try each one of those styles on using that copy. So um, that's great. Yeah. And, you know, you have to you have to do your homework. You have yeah. to do your research. Yeah. And then one little tip that like I don't know where I stumbled upon it. If I made it up, it was a long time ago. But I actually love this tip. So if you're looking at a piece of copy and you read the whole thing and you read the specs last, because we all know the specs can be like yeah, cuckoo bananas, right? Yeah. But there's probably some intent in the specs that you can draw from, right? Yeah. Um, you, you look through all the clues and you look at the script and you find the words that you know are in there purposefully to create a mood or, you know, like if it's a cosmetic spot, right? So there's going to be like... Um, Smooth, silky, you know, all mm -hmm. of those words, Sexy, right? Sexy, flirty, right. Bold, and so drama, then volume. you take the, to make those words stand out but not sound out of place or announcery, mm -hmm. you take whatever style the copy is. So if the style of the copy is sultry, and you, you take just those words and you become more sultry on just those words. So if it's like, um, you know, a smooth, sleek foundation. So you would take smooth and sleek and you get more sultry on that. So it would be like a smooth, sleek foundation, you right. know? But if, and now let's use that same piece of copy. And if the direction was say like um, rye, cause it's like, maybe it's a parody or whatever. Mm -hmm. You'd be like, yeah, smooth, sleek foundation, you know? So it's the same piece right. of copy applied differently Different based on yeah. what the intention is. Yeah, so. I love that. Yeah. Great. So when you think about some of the leaner times in your mm. career, um, when the pager or the phone <laughs> wasn't, <laughs> wasn't, or the wasn't a was like, I changed the battery again. again. <laughs> I know. Um, you had all those quarters and dimes for the payphone, but didn't need them. Right, exactly. Um, how did you navigate through those? I mean, I know your essence is yeah. staying half full. Right, but for sure. But it's, it's about having a well-balanced life mm -hmm. and having joy in your life in all areas, you know, not, you, yes, you love doing this, but I think if you have a full, rich life outside of voiceover and outside of acting, it enriches your mm -hmm. acting work as well. So, you know, finding what you love, like finding a hobby, even if it's like, you know, late in life going like, all of a sudden I discovered I love to golf or, you know yeah. what I mean? And like yeah. becoming passionate about something else in your life. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, when you have to pay the bills, you have to pay the bills. Um, but if you have that passion, you have that joy that's fulfilling you, it'll, it'll carry you through and the rest will kind of fall into place. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, sometimes you have to do strategic, tactical things like, you know, as much as I loved Jeff Danis and ICM and DPN, and they were my family for about 12, 13 years while I was out here. After a while, I just had to see for myself, like, if I, if I made a change, would it have an impact, you know? Mm -hmm. Because you, you just don't know, you know, especially when you've been yep. somewhere like your yeah. whole career. Yep. Yeah. And I was so grateful. Every day I went there, I was so grateful to be there because you are working among the absolute top people in the industry. Mm -hmm. um, so I thought, like, where could I possibly go? And when you trust yourself and you trust your gut, and again, it was just like this flow of energy that just kept coming to me and I kept hearing the name Atlas, Atlas, Atlas. And I went over there and I sat down with Heather and Carly at the time and John Wasser and all the good people there. Mm -hmm. It just felt right. It just felt By like way, it was, yeah. John Wasser's watching right now. Uh, hi, John. He's, hi, John. he's right you. there. We he love watches John. all these shows. And in all wonderful. seriousness, you have become my next mentor in the yes. business. Nice. I mean, like, yeah. He's amazing. And you want to, yeah. I mean, like, passion. somebody Talk who knows passion. voiceover inside out, upside down, and backwards. It's mm -hmm. like he invented this. And yeah. he lives it every single solitary day. Yeah. And um, so they just became my next family. And it has been, and I'm still there. And it's been yeah. such a wonderful yeah. um, second act of yeah. my voiceover mm -hmm. career. And 
you know, that's how I got Love It or List It. Yep. Yeah. And all the expanding narration that I've done yep. since then. Is well, you make a great team so, because you bring some incredible things to the table. Yeah. So Well, yeah. and they value um, that. They you know, do. They as talk a human about being, it. not just as a talent. And I think anymore, you know, there's a lot of talented people out there. But I think if you're going to become a family, you have yes. to really consider yeah. who you are Absolutely. showing up at the reunion. One thing with. that I've seen consistent with everything that you've been, all your stories. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm from when you got started until now, mm -hmm. is that every time you made a bold move, mm -hmm. amazing things have come out Absolutely, of yeah. absolutely. So and you I went to a different, yeah. But, yeah. That's a pattern right yeah. there. Yeah, and you have to trust, you, you have mm -hmm. to trust. Sometimes, you know, that bridge isn't gonna show itself until you take the first step, mm -hmm. and then you trust that it does. And, and that moment with Heather of her going like, uh, I don't think you understand the gravity of the situation. Yes. That was like our defining moment of, you know, agent and client at Atlas. Like, she was like, I'm not allowing you to pass up this incredible yeah. opportunity. Right. And it was, oh my right. God. And could you, first oh, of all, I, oh. you wouldn't even be alive. <laughs> I, right I now. would literally, you knew that glass that was half full, it was smashed. Yeah, yeah, everything. I drank five bottles of whiskey out of it and then collapsed I just. I after that. People, oh I know. my God, I said no to that, that show. I know. Can you imagine? We talk about it yeah. every year at the Christmas party. Yeah. She's like, remember? Oh. And I was like, tell the story, yeah, Heather. Tell well, the but story. it's a lesson too of, you know, you need yeah. to put the right In people correct. around you. Yes, absolutely. You know, it's very important who you associate mm -hmm. with. And, so cool. And, yeah. So this is the mystery question, Ooh. T. No one knows what it Pick is. Pick a card. Pick a card. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Are you going to read my tarot? Okay. Oh, this is deeply philosophical. Mm. How will our culture... Pencil. Mavoso, yeah, Pencil. I know. <laughs> How will our culture change in the next hundred years? How will our culture change in the next 100 years? More open concept. More open concept. <laughs> no, we'll go back to yes, less asbestos. We'll do yeah. less open concept. All the rooms will be divided. Actually, yeah, no, no, yeah, yeah I know. Up. Everybody will be Everyone. like, I'm sick of connecting oh, with you. Like, I need more wall. walls. More walls. Um, how will our culture change in the next 100 years? This is your okay. opinion, right? Yes, this is my opinion. Okay, so with politics being what they are right now, mm -hmm. and it seems like the world is becoming more and more polarized, mm -hmm. I actually have a lot of hope because look at what has happened, right? Mm -hmm. Look at, we had 750,000 women, men and women and children, marching in the streets in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. Nobody in Los Angeles comes together for anything ever. We're all mm -hmm. in our little bubbles, in our cars, right. driving from right. place to place, worrying about our own lives, right? The unity that has come forward from all of the controversy and, mm -hmm. you know, everything that's been going on, I think is elevating our consciousness. And yep. I actually think we're going to end up in a more loving, peaceful world mm -hmm. because of all of this. People like, are awake. Yeah, people like are. Like they haven't been before. I agree. Yeah. Absolutely. I agree. Yeah. So I think 100 years from now, you know, our great grandchildren mm -hmm. will yeah. be, you know, looking back at this period in history yeah. going like, you know what? Mm. Thank God that happened exactly. because we are where we yeah. are now because yeah. of it. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh my God. Well, it. we are sure glad that you're in our lives. Oh, my, oh gosh, my God. I, I miss and, you guys. I want more um, of you in my life. I, I have to say. Thank you so much for being yes. here. Oh, and my God. For, just for, I mean, you're just such a beautiful inside and out human being. And I'm right so grateful you. that, you know, we have you and that yes. like, the business has you. And Well, I mean, we abundance are. Abundance just needs to engulf you. Were you a little afraid that? We hadn't asked you to be on the show for this whole time. <laughs> Let's see. Did I'm you, guest number 374. Did it, did it pass your mind? Well, let me tell no, you. No, I said we, we wanted need... to save you for now because for now the, the show's huge. The fancy and show. And people uh -huh. can get to everything uh, from Tina. No, yes. no, 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 no. I mean, like. No, but imagine, you know. Yeah. It's like, yeah. You, I always feel like everyone gets here when, when they're, they're supposed to. Totally. Well, and that is, like, totally apropos mm -hmm. of our message of the day, yeah. which is, like, it all happens in yeah. perfect timing. And no, I never really had that thought, honestly. I know. I was but I will say right back at you. you because you guys have provided such an amazing service. And I bet so many people have become successful in this business because of the show. You know, because of the well, tips they've learned, because of the inspiration, and just like the awareness that you've brought to the voiceover world. Well, it's amazing. Thank you very thank you. much. And it's, you know, we get. We love doing it. And we do. And we get it's a wonderful, privilege. wonderful emails from literally people from all over the world mm -hmm. telling us exactly that. Oh, that's to amazing. say, because yeah. of your show, 
I did this or did that or was able to create this and do that and it's giving me the inspiration because they got nothing. Right, you don't live right. in LA. Or a story yeah. that and I guess told have, that made absolutely, me feel it really not as fearless with them. and I yeah. So, yeah. you know, and that's why Stacey and I get excited about doing the show because how can we not after everybody's telling us all yeah. the great stuff they're getting, right. how can we stop doing that? No, I know. I'm actually really jealous. Like so I, you're stuck I, I wish I had thought of this first. I'm gonna cat fight you now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean I, I knew him first. Oh my god. Anyways, <laughs> Tina, thank you so we much. Thank you guys. Um, love you. You guys, love we you, are going to see you uh, next time with a new show. So, bye everybody. Spread the love. Get buzzed. I'm Tina Morosco, and I just got buzzed with Chuck and Stacy, and it was good. My final message to all of you watching is really just to spread the love. Do what you love, and then spread the joy, because that's where the magic is. Well, and that's all we have with the wonderful Tina Morosco. What an awesome girl. She's incredible, and how cool that I knew her from New York, you knew her from out here, and she knew both of us Absolutely. before you and I knew each when other. When it's meant to be, it's meant to be. And you know what else is meant to be? A new show next week, so stick around. Absolutely, and keep up with us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We love you guys. Thank you so much for watching, and just remember, you, you always, always have, have time for a little buzz. buzz. Buzz Weekly is sponsored by Chuck Duran's Demo That Rock. Rock. The voiceover demo producer to the stars is now available to you. Visit DemosThatRock.com and take your voiceover career to the next level. See you next time. And remember, you always have time for a little